Alrighty guys, it is time for week one in season six of the Lithio Battle Association. And the Eternity Enders, of course, are going up against the Chicago Grand Bulls in week one. Very exciting. I love battling people in leagues that I actually haven't faced before at all. And this is an opponent that I have never heard of, so that it makes it even more exciting. Very nice unknown factor. But of course, my co-coach uh, Aiden is here again to help me out with the team analysis mm -hmm. because he is the one who drafted the team. So say hello, sir. Good night. All right. So, sir, what do you see here in the team matchup here? If you just want to go over, I'll go over the teams and then uh, you tell me what you know. But of course, you can see what we have available on the right there. We already did the team draft analysis. So if you didn't see that video, it's in the playlist with this video. Very easy to get to. Uh, of course, the Chicago Grand Bulls have Mega Venusaur, Excadrill, Entei, Hydreigon, Slowbro, Sableye, Terrakion, Grand Bull, Rotom, Cutform, and Miltank. So, uh, I don't know, let's just hop right into it, man. What do you think, uh, what are we, what are we expecting for this, this momentous week one here? Alrighty, well, uh, first and foremost, uh, this was just after the draft had finished, and uh, I was looking at, you know, uh, the different teams and what we had that could, you know, instantly beat the others, and I saw Wimsicott really, you know, gave the work to the Grand Bulls, but, uh, something was standing in the way, and that was Entei, and, uh, Looking at it more, I think that gives more problems to us and Winscott gives to him, so uh, we'll have a work cut out for us. Uh, yeah, and and just generally fairy, grass, and then a coverage move. Um, I think we decided on Psychic. Uh, I think we're probably yep. going to go Specs, Whimsicott. Yeah, with Moonblast, Giga Drain, Psychic, U-Turn. That covers his entire That's team it. outside of... Um, well, nothing, I guess. Everything gets hit by that. In some way. That drill uh, can take a few hits. Yes, because uh, Giga Drain, of course, is just neutral. But mm -hmm. uh, I was actually thinking uh, Energy Ball over Giga Drain just for that power boost, actually. Just, okay, I will definitely switch that out. And that makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, that power boost will probably pick up. Um, since he, this battle is going to be so momentum based uh, and getting extra, extra chip damage in that way. And plus, we don't need Giga Drain as much just because. Um, I think Whimsicott will be switching out a lot too, so it won't be as susceptible to needing recovery. Anyways. Yep. Uh, and then outside of Whimsicott, uh, which is definitely one of our main kind of, we just need to blow as many holes in this team as we can. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially if I can click Psychic on Entei as it comes in. That's going to hurt it, and then we can kind of just switch freely into Entei with our uh, more defensive Dragonite. Because it's pretty bulky, yeah. and we don't have to worry about burns if we're running um, Heal Bell Dragonite too. So, what what made you decide on Dragonite as far as the? Especially most people see Dragonite, they expect it to be Dragon Dance, Sweep Away type deal, or or either that or Weakness Policy. So, I think we're kind of really going off the the record here with the the bulky one. Mm -hmm. uh, so I decided on Dragonite because that was probably our most Dirty fire resist, which is something we sorely needed. Uh, I also looked at Thick Fat Momo, which didn't stand up to the test of, you know, Entei, and also for Alligator, which wouldn't have worked offensive set because of uh, the offensive pressure that it provides against this team. So Dragonite is something that can both uh, switch into repeatedly uh, on Entei, outside of possibly Abandoned Stone Edge after rocks or any prior damage, but. Um, the best thing about Dragonite is that with your bell, yeah, like you said, it can get rid of the burns on not only itself but the rest of the team, so it functions as it's more of an offensive support. For sure. Plus, Dragonite can run, uh, we're going to be running it most likely with Hurricane and Dragon Pulse on the modest side. That way, if we do get burned, it doesn't affect our offensive potential, and it allows us to hit Mega Venusaur. Whereas Fire Punch isn't doing anything to make a Venusaur, and then, of course, uh, Dragon Claw unboosted. Venusaur doesn't care about that either. Uh, as far as Excadrill, which is relatively very, very, very probable that he'd bring to this battle, that does kind of switch mm -hmm. in for free against Dragonite. Um, it's scary. Yeah. Uh, but that's why that's why I really, really was pushing for Aqua Jet on for Alligator. I just think he's going to bring a Scarf Excadrill. Um... If he doesn't bring a Scarf Exodrill, what do you think he'd bring Scarfed? Um, 
probably, uh, uh, if you did, but I don't think it will, uh, probably Hydreigon or possibly Terrakion to our prioritise any uh, setup sweepers that we do have, or even when it comes to Winscott or Archeops, because it just looks two points short. So uh, I think that's about it as far as Scarfers. I think Entei uh, could possibly be a Scarfer, but it's much more useful as a choice band user. Yeah, that, man, Bam. I wish we had a Pokemon with pressure on it, because that would be nice to, to use up some of those Sacred Fires to switch in. Yeah. The uh, the other Pokemon we're going to be bringing to this most likely are also uh, one I'm really excited about, Archeops, as more of a an anti-suicide type lead. Mm -hmm. uh, who do we expect to see leading on his side of the team there? I could say uh, probably Entei, just to get uh, offensive pressure, for, pressure first up, or if he wants to set up any sort of hazards or uh, any sort of momentum, then probably Terrakion, uh, maybe Rotom, and maybe Miltank? Maybe. And Miltank is a Pokemon I kind of, I feel like I overlooked it when we were discussing things earlier, especially because of its mm -hmm. base speed. But uh, at the same time, I'm not too worried about it because we're going to have Cobalion. Um, That's right. But it, Miltank is just one of those Pokemon that can randomly be annoying. Um, yeah. Especially, I don't know, for everyone who's paid played hard gold soul silver or gold silver and when he's just like yeah roll out bitch and it's just like well now we're dealing with that at least we won't have to deal with roll out here i don't see uh, nova hawk bringing a, a roll out milting if he does he's a god but yeah um, Clearly. with uh and the set bad. on archaeops was what again uh it was sash um with just enough speed for terrakion and just go max attack with head smash acrobat uh, acrobatics despite the sash, uh, just in case it gets broken, and Stealth Rock and Taunt. Uh, I went Taunt over anything like U-Turn or Tailwind or anything like that, just because it's good for stopping uh, Slowbro and I guess anything from setting up rocks and all that sort of stuff. For sure. And the I... good thing about... Uh, oh, sorry. No, uh, I do think um, if, he, if he leads with... If he leads Miltank, I feel like the, the play is to probably click Taunt. Uh, if yep. he leads, if he leads Terrakion, I, I still, I, there I guess we should probably just set up the rocks and exchange rocks. Yeah, odd rocks, yep. Um, if he leads with Entei, click a Hex Smash, <laughs> just because that's yeah, such a big smash, threat yeah. against our team. Yeah. Uh, against Excadrill, I guess it's kind of a 50-50. We could taunt it, but you can also just Iron Head us in the face. Mm -hmm. Excadrill, uh, I think... Uh, the good thing about Archaeops is it has great lead matchup against nearly everything, considering it's a suicide lead, but I think Sableye, to avoid the Will-O-Wisp, uh, we'd want to switch out. Uh, Rotom Cut, if it's a lead, it may be a Scarf variant, so we want to switch out. And Excadrill, since we can't really touch it, and it's going to give us more problems if we stay in, it's probably best to switch out into next member, Cobalion. Indeed. And Cobalion is definitely looking... Um... I've never run Air Balloon on Cobalion before. We're looking at a Air Balloon Cobalion, Max Attack, Max Speed, Jolly, with uh, Close Combat, Iron Head, Thunder Wave, and um, I'm missing one. Oh. Bolt Switch. There we go for priority. Uh, not for priority. I'm sorry. I'm tired. Oh, no. For momentum. Excuse oh, me. Oh, gotcha. Uh, this is why we need two brains so that when one is tired, the <laughs> other one all sharp and witty and everything. Um, well, but Cobalion you. here is also kind of a tech Excadrill check to an extent, especially if he's Very scarped. Good. Yep. Um, being able, and we do, I do need to confirm that the Excadrill is scarfed before I, I do that. Uh, which, if he leaves Excadrill, I'm going to assume it's not, it's, it's not scarfed. Yeah, uh, it could be rocks. Yeah. Uh, it could be defensive. Which, a defensive Excadrill would actually work pretty decently against our team. Mm -hmm. uh, especially since we're foregoing Mamoswine in this matchup. But for Ralligator, kind of... Hits. Huh? Sponge's Fairy hits very well. Yes. Yes, indeed. Which, we are relying on Whimsicott to kind of punch holes here. So yeah. I will take any extra damage that I can get on Excadrill in this match. Because it, it's not hard to put Excadrill, especially an offensive one, in range of a Life Orb for Alligator um, Aqua Jet either. That does right around, even without any um, Swords Dance boost, it does right around 60-65% to 65 right in there on average. Yep. So any chip damage will be good. Uh, and speaking of Feraligator, we are going to be running a Swords Dance one. Um, 
I, uh, originally, I didn't actually suggested uh, a double dance set. Is that what you suggested originally? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which, I, and I've been kind of waffling on that. I already have the Froligator bread. It's a matter of just choosing the moves now. What was your thinking on the double dance set? Uh, so with the double dance, I thought that uh, we, you know, with uh, which we, we uh, pardon me, with whichever came out, uh, if it was a faster mon like Terrakion, which even Scarf Terrakion, which uh, for Alligator King that's better plus two, or even a Scarf Hydreigon or something, anything that's faster, uh, we can get to jump on them with agility, and usually if they're that fast, they tend to be uh, less bulky, so we can, you know, for Alligator is really strong, so it can knock them out or severely weaken them. With Swords Dance, uh, it helps break down, uh, with Crunch and Waterfall, helps break down Slowbro, Grand Bull, uh, Mill Tank, anything that's bulkier. Sure. And, and my thinking on the, uh, I, I was saying Swords Dance, rather, just because of the importance of Aqua Jet in this matchup, more so for check for extra drill less so for Entei just because it can use extreme speed but with the right spread because we're running more of a custom spread that I didn't came up with mm -hmm. even a banded extreme speed is a three hit KO uh, so forcing Which him into that extreme speed situation is really really good because that br allows us to bring in other things if it's banded and if it's not it's banded Entei really struggles to um, overpower uh, for alligator and that's a free swords dance opportunity fortunately mm -hmm. um, if he has, I really like running, um, right now we have Swords Dance, Aqua Jet, Waterfall Crunch, Yep, I'm pretty sure, um, which does get walled by Hydreigon, but I don't think he's going to bring Hydreigon, that's just when we were talking before, let's try to call the list because he's obviously not going to bring some of these, Hydreigon is just a bad matchup against our team overall, we have two yeah. fairies, we have Mammoth Swine with Priority Ice, uh, to a lesser extent Agility Porygon Z, um, that just kind of handles Hydreigon for the most part, so yeah. I don't think we're going to see it. If we do, I'll be happy, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, on top of the fact that, uh, uh, depending on the type of player that he is, even if he does bring it, uh, it's not going to appreciate a plus two waterfall, plus that project from Feraligator. It's, yeah, it's just it's not that bulky. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, I just mentioned Porygon Z. That is our mm -hmm. last most likely team member. Um, I'm just leaving room in the ether for what if we change at the last minute here. Porygon Z, uh, originally we kind of struggled to fill in its moveset, because with adaptability tri-attack, it kind of blows through the entire team outside of Sableye um, Excadrill. Uh, I guess to a lesser extent Terrakion, but even Terrakion's 2 hit KO'd by tri-attack, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and so in that last slot, we actually ended up going with um, Agility. So the full moveset right now is Tri Attack, Hyper Beam, yes, Hyper Beam, Agility, and um, Thunderbolt. We didn't have a solid way to hit Slowbro, and that's a perfect place for it. Uh, and I was really struggling to come up with an item on Porygon Z, and he actually suggested Silk Scarf because. Uh, we can bluff, you know, the Choice Scarf or the Choice Specs if something gets hit with a Tri Attack, and. Uh... It, it's also just a nice boosting item that doesn't hinder us, like Life Orb. Yeah, I, I think we will need all the HP we can get here if we're switching around as much as I expect we're going to. Which is why I really yeah. hope to deny him setting up his entry hazards, but that might be... Depending on what he leads with, that might be difficult. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's that's the name of the game. I mean, just, uh, you know, press, pressing on with the offense so that he doesn't get an opportunity to... A, set up with any uh, defensive threats, or B, uh, you know, give us problems with any of his off offensive threats. So the thing is, we're going to need to be switching around a lot. We're going to need to be uh, making smart plays. So, yeah. For sure. All right. So that is the general matchup. Um, I just want to go through really quick and say what we expect him to bring, because if we can just nail it down to six, because it's always fun to look back on that at after these are done. But my six were... Uh, Mega Venusaur, Excadrill, Entei, Terrakian, Slowbro, and probably Rotom Cut, just because Scarf Rotom Cut is really hard to resist. What were your six, yep. sir? Uh, my six were very similar, uh, that being Mega Venusaur, Excadrill, Entei, Slowbro, Terrakion, and either Rotom Cut or Granbull, because Granbull does uh, with Intimidate and Thunder Wave, and it's raw bulk. It can put a stop to some unboosted physical 
physical threats. So yeah, I could see the I could see the uh, positives to bringing that from his point of view. Indeed, but that's why we have Dragonite instead of Noivern. I won't be missing any hurricanes this season. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, not blonde as a bad is he? <laughs> he won't have to rely on echolocation, hopefully, because he can just look over there and see him. Right? It should be easier. Exactly right. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be the t- week one matchup for the LBA. Thank you very much for joining me today, Aiden. And guys, stay tuned to that battle and uh, wish us luck as we start this LBA season. And be sure to go check out uh, Nova Hawk's channel. I'll have his Twitter information and his channel information in the description. Uh, he'll have a team analysis, I'm sure, uh, at the very least a battle video. So I'll leave that in there for you. And I hope to talk to you guys soon. Later, guys. Catch us later.